Hey guys, my name is Chris Porocci, welcome to Gear Corner. In today's episode we're going to be talking about the Universal Audio AUX box. I've received quite a few requests, so many of you wanted to, uh, to see an episode about the AUX box. First of all, this is not a paid review or a demo or anything, so um, I will just sort of show you how I am using it, why I think it's um, a game changer, at least for me. And um, I will not show all the sounds and all the specs and features and everything. I will show everything that I use. There are a couple of sections in this video. So if you want to watch something specific, check out the timestamps in the description box. And also I have a couple of gear links and infos in the description box as well. What is the AUX? For all of you guys who for some reason still didn't hear about it, it's something you put between your amplifier and your speaker. You just go with a speaker cable from the speaker out of your head into the aux box. Then from the aux box, you go with a second speaker cable into the actual cab, if you even want to use it still. We'll get into that later. In today's episode, we're going to be checking out my settings on the aux, the new features, the new cabs with um, the last version, the 1.2 version. Um, also, I'll be explaining why I think the AUX box is a game changer for people like me. And uh, also, I will compare the, the AUX box with my mics, which I've set up already. So uh, that's going to be interesting, AUX versus cab with mics. I use it at home all the time instead of using a cab. And why is that? Because this way I can turn up my amp. There's a, a very high quality load box built in. So um, I don't have to be afraid of my, you know, power amp section of the amp. I can turn up, I don't have to use a cab and I don't have to be loud necessarily. So without further ado, let's get into the first section of this video, which is going to be my settings, my sounds with the aux. This right here is the cab I'm using all the time since I have the aux. I needed a couple of weeks to get used to um, the whole surface and the sounds and the mics and everything. And I tried many of the cabs, which are hidden here. And um, I settled uh, with this one and these mics. So here are all the cabs. And um, right here in the middle, there's the 2x12 Alnico 50, which is a closed back cabinet. and. Um, yeah, I found it very nice uh, to work with. And here I have the two mics. The first mic is the uh, Dynamic 4 to 1. You will recognize this and know exactly which mic um, it's simulating. I've settled uh, with this because it sort of had a, a more natural, um, crisp sound than the 57. I mean, I can swap and show you what, what changes. It just has a creamier mid-range, this one. And the other mic is the Ribbon 121. It's just a very nice Ribbon mic that has all the low on you want and more. It's a really nice open sounding Ribbon mic and um, yeah, it pairs perfectly with, uh, with dynamic mics. And also I have the, the room mics, which is the Ribbon Mono. I went for the Mono one for no specific reason. I've decided to use the EQs in the aux itself because I wanted to sort of save a preset for my guitar that um, when I'm recording something I don't have to waste that much time in my DAW. So here we go, mic one. I have the low cut active, it's on axis and this is how the EQ looks like. Again, a low cut active from 150 hertz and um, yeah, the EQ curve is pretty interesting. I have now 2.1 decibels of uh, plus in gain on around, no, exactly at a thousand hertz, which is something I felt the cab was missing. 
the simulated cab. Then, this is the EQ curve on the second mic. Again, the same thing. I mean, this is a ribbon mic, so uh, don't forget about that. You know, when you see crazy low cuts going on, again, around 100 hertz, uh, there's a low cut. Then, um, yeah, taking care of all this bass end. And as you can hear, there's still a lot going on. This is what um, an engineer would do with your guitar sound anyhow. Low cut the hell out of it because that's not your frequency. You don't need a lot of those because otherwise it will just get too muddy and just unclear sounding. And then in the master EQ section, again, I have a little um, high boost going on, but it's not a lot actually. It's, uh, it's just very subtle because I felt like, you know, with singer coils, if you want to have this, this um, chimey sound, It just helped a little bit to, to open it up. It's not a lot, as you can tell. This is another cab I'm using quite a lot. This is my uh, Bassman 4x10 Bassman simulation with the condenser and the ribbon in front. And uh, this is sort of my alternative cab. So let's say I'm recording a short song sample and I want to have more than one guitar tracks. I will pan them, obviously. But if you're using the same rig on, the, on both sides, left and right, you will probably have some phasing issues. So what I'm doing instead is using my main cab, the 2x10, 2x12, sorry, um, on one of the sides, and I'm definitely using an alternative cabinet on the other side. And this is an awesome cab for that. It has more of this vintage, you know, tweed kind of sound, and way more mid-range, less modern sounding, and just it's just an awesome vintage sound. <laughs> which is a bit nasty, a bit gritty, you know, but I love it. Universal Audio just brought out the V1.2, which is the latest version of the AUX. Out of the five new cabs, there's one that caught my attention right in the first second. You know, I tried it and I was like, okay, this will end up on one of these positions, you know, where you can save a few cabs and rigs and whatever um, on your AUX itself. So uh, that is the V, the California V30, which is obviously something Mesa-ish or, you know, California style, uh, 4x12. It's awesome for metal. Of course, I had to try it immediately, but I will not necessarily use it for metal. I saved the rig right here, which uses pretty much the same EQ settings as my 2x12 Alnico 50 rig has. <laughs> Let me show the five new cabs very briefly. Uh, it's gonna be just one sound per cab, just to, to give you an idea of how they are.
why is the Oxbox a game changer for me? It's not something I say easily. First of all, it allows me to use my tube amps at home and still have their proper sound. I don't have to use them on 0.1, you know, because 0.2 is already way too loud. That fact alone that I can use my normal gear at home on lower volumes, you know, and, and don't have to annoy everyone um, and have an awesome sound that's undescribable. That's the most important thing for me. Second reason, it's so much faster to record with the aux than using mics. Even in the studio, mics get moved around. So finding the right position can take days until you're happy with the mic placement and everything. Third reason is that it's very intuitive. It's so simple to use. If you understand how these things like cabs, mics, EQs work in real life situations like real cabs with real mics in front of it and what off axis on axis does and speaker breakup and all of these kind of stuff, the whole app, the whole unit itself is so easy to use. Fourth reason is that you don't even have to fool around with impulse responses. Like imagine you don't have your own impulse responses and you just want to have some good ones. You know, you have to buy them extra. With this, you don't use IRs. It's uh, all the simulation is built into the aux, which um, is very nice if you just couldn't be bothered with IRs. You just want it to sound right in the box. If you don't want to use the simulation in the aux and want to use IRs, you can still set the aux on direct and then in your DAW you can you know use an IR loader plugin and use your favorite IRs. So it's still possible but um, I don't see the point of it unless it's your own IR recorded with your cab and your mics in the room you love you know that's of course uh, um, an exception. Fifth reason is very simple but the most important thing for everyone incredible sounds. The last reason is the built-in effects. We are talking universal audio here. They have incredible plugins simulating very expensive vintage gear and sort of collectible gear. There are four effects in the master section of the AUX software. And uh, those are the um, compressor, the uh, 1176 compressor, an equalizer, a reverb, and a delay. With the delay, you can also set up a chorus sound, by the way. So there's a chorus built in too. These four effects are so good. I mean, proper studio quality effects. And now finally, Oxbox versus cab with mics. You have to know that I do not have the same cab or mics or preamp or whatever the Aux is simulating. So it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one, you know, fair comparison. It's not the point. It's more of a, a real life comparison, like a dude, having a cab and one or two mics and that setup is against the aux. When I'm recording with the cab through the mics, I'm using the Morgan 1x12 cab with the Celestion Creamback 75 speaker inside. In front of the cab is my 906 uh, mic from Sennheiser and right here off camera, I hope at least, is my Rode NT2 condenser mic. <laughs>
forward to uh, editing this part because right now in the room it's like a very nice sound coming out of my two near field monitors right there um, compared to a very loud 1x12 Morgan Cab sound. So I cannot tell how they compare. I'm pretty sure there's still something I forgot to mention or to show in this video. So in case there's something missing, you really want to know something, just let me know in the comment section. You guys take it easy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and helped to clarify a few things regarding the aux box. Take it easy. I'll be back very soon. Bye.